Virginia Currents is on the move to Pamplin Historical Park and the National Museum of the Civil War Soldier in Petersburg. The more than 400 acre campus is where 14,000 Union soldiers under General Grant broke through General Lee's defensive line on April 2nd, 1864. It ended the nine month campaign for Petersburg and led to Lee's surrender at Appomattox Courthouse. In 1991, the land was purchased by philanthropist and businessman Dr. Robert B. Pamplin, whose ancestors are tied to the property. His vision was to preserve history and educate, and did he ever? There are so many stories here that you're not going to hear anywhere else. A lot of folks that come in that are guests are just amazed that it's not just a museum, that it's a park, but it's not only a park, but we have three historic homes. We have original slave quarters at the Banks House. We're reaching out more not just to the academics that are interested in the strategy and the history of the battles, but also the antebellum South and talking about what it was like to be a planter and to be a farmer at that period and how important that still is today. The wives played a vital role when the men were usually out on business because usually they had to tend to more of the business side of the farming. The women, very strong women, are going to fill those uh, voids and you don't hear um, really enough about that and that's something that we document here at the park as well. We are on a plantation. Um, to be a plantation, a farm had to have at least 250 acres of land, at least 20 enslaved African Americans working that land, and the primary crop had to be what was considered a cash crop this plantation was growing tobacco. In the backyard, we've got a couple of barns, a couple of outbuildings, and then the recreated kitchen and servants hall as well, as gardens and of course our pen behind me is the barn and the pasture for the sheep and the chickens. Hollywood has done the public in general a pretty big disservice with the way they have portrayed Southern life before the Civil War. They liked, um, they got sucked into that sort of lost cause mentality of big formal fancy plantation homes and the reality is is that most plantations didn't have a big fancy home they had a fairly modest home it was not all fancy balls and cocktails on the back porch <laughs> it was a lot of work i think the experience of the common soldier and the people at that time because of the way it's presented interpreted in the museum and throughout the park it's something people can relate to, and it's really more of an experience than just a bunch of artifacts and cases going through your typical traditional historic site. Everything a soldier ate, wore, or used arrived on a covered supply. We have these devices called Orfeo devices, uh, and you're able to go through and get an audio tour, but you also have images that come up so you can see actual artifacts or letters other than what you're seeing either in the museum or out in the park or on the battlefield. And this really brings it to life in such a visual age that we're living in, especially for younger people. One of the galleries that's the most popular is going to be called Trial by Fire. And it's basically putting you in the shoes of the soldiers at that time and their first experience in battle. It really is an opportunity to learn about what life was like at a very difficult time in our country's past. To actually have that sort of connection, whether it's seeing it, whether it's hearing it, whether it's feeling it. You can read about it all you want in a textbook, but I don't think it really comes alive and you really make that connection to it and get a true understanding unless you're here. The park hosts educational groups, day and overnight camps, team building activities and more. In 2019, there are several events commemorating the park's 25th anniversary. For more information, visit pamplinpark.org.